From the WJFF studios in Liberty, New York, this is Radio Chatskill. I'm Tim Bruno. On today's show, is it a cold or COVID or RSV? The three viruses are driving a national wave of infections, and they share many common symptoms. We chat with Dr. Anjana Punthora of Gurdit Health about how to distinguish among the illnesses. This is Radio Chatskill. I'm Tim Bruno. This past Monday, Garnet Health announced that people were experiencing long wait times at three of their urgent care locations, Goshen, Middletown, and Monticello, due to high patient volume. That high volume was mostly due to an increase in respiratory illnesses, including COVID, flu, and RSV in patients of all ages. Among children, the U.S. Department of Health has said that more than three-quarters of children's hospitals beds nationwide were full in November, although experts say it's likely an underestimate. Joining us live now on the phone is Dr. Anjana Punthota, Garnet Health Medical Director for Children's Services Program and Pediatrics. Dr. Punthota, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, good morning, everybody. Doctor, why are we seeing this influx of, of flu, COVID, and RSV now? So, the re- usually our seasonal um, RSV season is between the months of November and March to April, I would say, mostly the winter months. But as you all know that when we had COVID, children were um, not uh, going to schools. They, there was a very good restriction in isolating uh, everyone at home, and then masks were in use. So for a whole year or year and a half, these children were not exposed to this virus. So now when the schools are reopened, daycare centers are open, people started mingling, there's no mask use, suddenly the virus has taken surge and all those children who haven't been infected that particular prior one year and a half are now ill. And these children who go to daycares and schools carry these germs back to home. And if there are little infants and toddlers, they all get sick as well. So we are seeing an early surge in RSV and we're inundated with a lot of influx of RSV patients this season. Plus there's the COVID and flu, which are, can be difficult to distinguish from RSV. Um, why is that? So basically, any viral infection that causes respiratory illness in children, they all present the same. However, we have to we have testing at Garnet Health Center when children walk in with respiratory symptoms like cough, shortness of breath, and difficulty breathing, decreased intake, decreased output of urine, and stuff like that. We check them. Any sick child is checked for COVID, RSV, and flu. Now, the test gives us the status of what virus they're positive for, but they are all uh, uh, they all present the same. But RSV, as the name says, respiratory syncytial virus, it is highly contagious, and it spreads by air in water droplets from cough, sneezes, and the problem here is this virus causes copious amounts of secretions in infants and really, really young children, less than six months of age, really they're at high risk for having hospitalizations, dehydration, and their lungs get really affected. And it's not just RSV that can affect children. It can also affect older adults? Yes. So RSV in adults, most of the adults likely have symptoms of upper respiratory infections like a cold or uh, inflammation of the larynx, like laryngitis, having hoarse voice, sore throat, runny nose, eyes tearing up. But majority of the adults really uh, get over this illness in three to five days as a common cold, just like a common cold. It's not as aggressive unless you see really older population whose immune systems are compromised. That's when it could be aggressive. But RSV itself is very aggressive in children, especially less than a year of age and most highly uh, affected Infants are less than six months, I would say. And we're very, very vigilant. Newborns and, uh, you know, infants less than three months are really, really supposed to be very cautious about it. It's, uh, it's interesting because, you know, uh, running nose, cough, congestion, sore throat can arise because of any of these viruses or a common cold. So the best, correct. the best way to figure that out is to, to get tested. Um, yes. Yeah, so, yes, correct. Yeah. And so what is it, in our area is one of these, particular viruses causing circulating the most? Yes. In Hudson Valley, we're seeing that RSV is really rampant right now. But as our seasonal illnesses right now, we're in the season of flu. Like every year, we have 
flu vaccines and flu viruses affecting children. So we're seeing a combination. Some children are coming in with both RSV, flu, or COVID also, because since COVID has been out, we're seeing a lot of children with COVID virus as well. So as you've heard, the word triple demic. So some children are coming with all the three viruses or some with one of one of these. And do have we peaked with RSV in our area? It seems that we may have nationally in some ways. Has that is that the case here? And is flu now sort of taking over? Where where do you see this in the current so state and where we're going? Can, yeah, as you can see, not only are we affected with the regular seasonal viral illnesses, RSV, flu, right, the regular thing, but the early surge of RSV really hit in October, and now we're seeing a lot of influx of patients into the hospitals coming with respiratory illnesses. To be honest, actually nationwide, the hospitals are inundated because everyone's seeing this surge. And apart from the normal seasonal viral illnesses, we we got slammed with all that a year of isolated children who are now exposed and who are sicker and who are exposed to the RSV virus. We, ha- I have to say, there's 20% positivity rate, like the CDC said, but we are we've been seeing a lot of um, combination of illnesses as well. Each child coming in with both RSV and flu, or flu and COVID, or RSV and COVID. So, so parents should still stay vil- vil- vigilant about uh, yes. both of these. And what, here's what, my yeah. advice to families: as soon as your child or an infant or a baby gets sniffles, runny nose, congestion, there is no need to panic. Usually, I think what happens is there's a panic that every child might end up in the hospital, not necessarily. Most of the children, majority of the children are treated and they get better and they go home or they can be treated at home. What I would advise is when you see your child having these upper respiratory symptoms, have nasal saline drops suction the nostrils if they're babies right before their feeding time so that the mucus is not accumulated. Make sure you watch if their chest muscles are rising, if they're really gasping for air, if they're short of breath, if they're having like grunting or their nostrils are flaring, or if if you see a baby having their chest muscles really dipping in. Those are all signs or any signs of bluish discoloration. Those are all signs that the baby or the child needs to be evaluated in the emergency room or urgent care or by a pediatrician. And in, you mentioned earlier that because there's more people out and about, more gatherings, uh, socializing, uh, we're seeing an increase of all three of these respiratory illnesses. Uh, do you right. advise folks to be cautious about you know mingling during Absolutely. the holidays? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is this is really a tough period because we are in the holiday time and I know families mingle, a lot of children, a lot of babies are born and there's this joyous celebration everywhere. But my advice is how to prevent is it's because of the highly contagious nature, it can be passed along by contact with infected people, contaminated objects. For example, if a child with respiratory symptoms is touching a toy or an object and playing, some other children touching it can get it. And also air and water droplets, so coughing and sneezing. So avoid sharing cups, toys, and any kind of utensils, and constantly clean the surfaces, especially doorknobs or places where children touch, like toys and objects. And if adults have runny noses, upper respiratory infection symptoms, please avoid kissing. Please avoid shaking hands. Avoid close contact. And, you know, covering. I would advise if you have if, if there's a family member with runny nose and cough and, like, sneezing constantly, wear a mask, cover that. And I would advise stay home as much as possible. Any exposure of babies, especially less than one year of age and mostly high risk or less than six months of age, please stay home. If you're just joining us, we're talking to Dr. Anjana Punthoda, Garnet Health Medical Director for Children's Services Program and Pediatrics. Uh, Doctor, um, flu season. I want to ask you about that. Usually, it peaks in December and February, but it uh, over the last two years, we've seen fewer f- flu cases than in pre-pandemic times. Do you think that this year, though, they'll be much higher? Yes. So again, the same concept of how when we had COVID and everyone was homebound, isolation, restrictions in place, masks in place, we did not see RSV or flu. And flu was not as rampant that one to one and a half year. Now, the everyone's exposed to it. We definitely are already seeing a surge in flu, flu um, patients here in the hospital. 
And uh, regarding flu, uh, a reminder again, uh, when to call a doctor and when to, you know, when it becomes severe, yeah. what should folks look for? Yes. So my advice, like I said, any respiratory illnesses, viral illnesses have the similar symptoms, but flu also has like any of these high temperatures, fevers, uh, reduced intake, shortness of breath, really not taking any kind of um, fluids, no urine output that can lead to the risk of dehydration, Um, mainly shortness of breath. And if the chest muscles are getting really dipping in children, in adults, if they are not able to breathe, they feel chest tightness, please seek help and please come to the hospital or emergency department or urgent care for um, evaluation and further care. And I would advise plenty of fluids because these fluids not only help in hydrating, but also they thin the secretions. So there's reduced risk of thickening of these symptoms causing cough. So hydration is really, really important. It also flushes the virus out much efficiently from the body. And let's talk about COVID-19. Um, it seems as if, as if there's been a drop in COVID alertness. Um, you know, we're kind of now back to what some folks say the normal but is that actually the true case Uh, actually we have to say compared to when we had the pandemic overall i think um you know the cases have decreased so i would say that we had um we don't see that much of a surge i know the virus has mutated and we saw omicron variant and multiple other variants i would say we do see cases coming in, but not as much as when we saw during the years of the pandemic. But still, you advise to get vaccinated? Absolutely. Vaccines are the one way to prevent any kind of serious symptoms. You develop, you give passive immunity, you have antibodies. So if there is any uh, one who's got a weakened immune system and little uh, you know, um, any kind of risk of like comorbid situations, chronic diseases, underlying diseases, or lung issues, absolutely vaccines are the best way to prevent any kind of seriousness or illnesses or deaths in, in this regard. However, I have to say RSV does not have a vaccine. Children who are born really preemie have really bad heart problems they're born with, have like monoclonal antibodies they have to be uh, they have criteria they have to be approved for. So RSV does not have a vaccine, which is why you have to be even more careful of these isolation and, um, you know, pre- precautions at home to ke- save, save these babies and keep them isolated from the infected people. And COVID and flu have vaccines. We at Garnet Health have vaccinations. So please, I advise everybody to get vaccinated, the booster vaccines, and um, please stay healthy. And of course, the flu vaccine. Absolutely. The flu vaccines are also out, and I would advise everyone to receive those vaccines. I know that every year, whatever the prevalent strain is, the vaccine is, you know, produced against that. Definitely, you will prevent these aggressive symptoms that make you feel sick for days, and you you don't want to put your health in jeopardy. So definitely go for vaccines. In the introduction, I mentioned that uh, Garnet Health advised folks that there were some long wait times at three of the urgent care locations in Goshen, Middletown, and Monticello due to high patient volume, mainly because yes. of these increased respiratory illnesses. Have you seen that uh, decrease during the week, or should folks still be prepared that there are going to be some longer wait times? So unfortunately, what happens is when we're seeing such a rapid influx, I want to advise that Please expect there are wait times. However, our staff are constantly working to be efficient. We're trying to triage them in the waiting areas. We're trying to triage them and and evaluate them in their cars, in the parking lot. So if your child is ill or if a patient is ill, please do call and say that you have to be seen right away. At the same time, we can also reduce the influx. Every child who has a runny nose need not come to the hospital or urgent care or an office. Supportive care can be given. Temperatures can be monitored. Fever control can be done with Tylenol or ibuprofen. So supportive care, steamy showers, all these can help with milder symptoms. Only when you see shortness of breath, respiratory illnesses where your chest is tight, you can't breathe in and the oxygenation is less and children are really struggling, then please, by all means, please come in. So please reach out to us anytime. We'll do our best. And we want to make sure our community stays safe and healthy. And and as we've been talking about, it's not just Garnet Health. Uh, healthcare facilities across the country are overwhelmed. So um, it is uh, something to pay attention to. Absolutely. And, and just a reminder, and some of these things are the basics. And we've been, we went over these a lot during the COVID pandemic. But 
some basic information about how to uh, keep yourself uh, safe from respiratory illnesses and other viruses, washing your hands uh, properly and, and wearing Absolutely. a mask. Any, anything else? Absolutely. So as I said before, that mingling during holidays is a huge, huge uh, risk for spreading this contagious viruses. So washing hands repeatedly, wearing masks, use a hand sanitizer. And if there's anybody with sniffles, please try to avoid kissing, touching, and also clean the kitchen counters, doorknobs, surfaces where you have objects and children sharing toys, utensils, don't share them, and constant cleaning. Please make sure you clean those surfaces with like wipes or, you know, um, soap and water. Please keep it clean. We've been talking to Dr. Anjana Punthoda, Garnet Health Medical Director of Children's Services Program in Pediatrics. There's more information at garnethealth.org. Dr. Punthoda, thank you for joining us this morning with these important reminders about uh, these three respiratory illnesses all converging at the same time. Thank you so much for having me, and I wish everyone healthy and happy holidays and please stay healthy and you know garnet health is here for our community our children our families our adults anytime so please reach out to us at any time and please stay healthy thank you so much thank you doctor